is the story of Kopa Kemi Ologan. Um, thieves come around, pick their bags and things like that. Then, at the same time, I had a case of a man that was being pursued by hired killers. And then, all of a sudden, they met him at the Asoro Sloop. At the same time, uh, living in the barrack, I discovered a woman who used to work in Uniben. She was to deliver and uh, she had a baby at home. One way or the other, she had complications, she developed complications and she was to be taken to town. Before you knew it, she died in the process. I'm not saying the road killed her, but um, I discovered that if the road was okay, maybe they would have taken her to the hospital earlier than when they took her. So with all these things on my mind, and then our zona inspector trying to encourage us to take on personal community development projects, I decided to take the road as my own personal CD. The chief press secretary, Mr. Lucky Wasa, who gave me notes to ITV. And through that, I was able to I gained their attention, they put me on their weekly program with uh, my presenter, my able presenter, Mr. Victor Imade. And so we started this, I joined him on this uh, Good Morning from Benin that used to hold on Sundays. In fact, they still do it on Sundays. So all through the time my project lasted, I was having that program, telling people about the progress of the program, of the, of the project. So people uh, got to hear about the project and then they were phoning him to tell us their own contribution. One of the people that watched the program, the, my first edition on ITV, was Evangelist Mrs. Eunice Osagede. She heard about the project and she sent for me and she was willing to identify with the project. The morning I asked her for the project that she was not willing to give. She gave her full support, likewise the members of her church. Another very important person that decided to identify with the project is the Bini Monarch. The Omonoba Nedo Uku Apolopolo, the Omonoba of Benin, the Oba of Benin. He saw the uh, program on EBS when I started grading from the barrack side. He saw the program, uh, he saw the project and decided to identify with it. He came to site himself and I've never seen, I mean, any, I mean a, an Oba like this because he was so friendly, he was ready to identify with the project, he gave us gifts, he gave us his financial support and most importantly, give us his blessing by praying for us. The Almighty Creator and the God of the good land that will bless you for the rest of the <laughs> Sending people to check out with the job and all that. Then NYC too, they also assisted in a lot of ways. Then there's somebody I will not forget. And that is someone that gave us a payloader. A payloader is worth about 39, 30, between 32 and 39,000 naira per day. And this is somebody that's not from Nigeria and yet he gave us his assistance. That's the FK Construction Company. The head of that place in Benin is engineer FK Alexis. He gave his support. Sometimes he gave us his grader. Sometimes he gave us his trailer. And it was all over us assisting us in any way. So I begin to wonder how white men should be able to assist us. I mean, in Nigeria, a lot of people came around to assist. Some sent their donations and they were all thanked in the media houses. Uh, the RCC. Somebody I will not f uh, forget before I mention RCC is our able, honorable minister of works and housing, Chief Tony Aneni. I met with him and honestly, I can't really, I can't really say this is what, I mean, I can't fathom or I can't quantify the way he assisted. He gave me a note to RCC, they gave me their support. I mean, it was not easy entering RCC as in getting them to assist you in such a project. But then, because of the minister, a lot of assistance, you know, getting granite and all that. They gave me all the granite I needed and they were all there. Sometimes they gave me their tippers, thanks to the Honorable Minister for Works and Housing. With, the, with these people in mind, with these people assisting me, I went ahead and I started grading the road from the barrack, then down to Asoro. I discovered the major problem there is there is a need for a culvert because all the water coming down from uh, town, as in Ring Road side, or the water coming down from Ubuyoko side, everything meets at Asoro Slope. And that is the most problematic part. One way or the other, we started building a culvert. This one now. This one is long. Three and a half and two and a half. We're able to build a culvert that takes the water off. <laughs> Because when we started cutting the road, a lot of people uh, they were against it because 
That was the shortest route to get to Ekewa Barak. Route to get to Ekewa Barak. But they had to pass through Ewotubu because we had to fix the road and the time was so short. Because I was supposed to the time was so short. So because of that, a lot of people wanted to like attack us there. Well then thanks to all of Benin and thanks to the TV houses, they had to say it in Benin language, they had to say it in English, they had to say it in Pidgin English for people to understand that we are trying to fix the road. So the problem was solved. And at this point again, I want to just say thank you to everybody that has been part of the project. Because with them, and then her, huh, lest I forget the people in the barrack too. I think we... Then at the same time, the people that gave us wood. <laughs> I have with me uh, this afternoon. A Wotubu Timber Association, they gave us their support. Timber Association, so they gave us about eight tippers to work with. And a lot of other people like that, you know, coming around. One way or the other. I want to say thank you to all of them. Well, I, I said I would do 20% of the money I would do. No, because people have donated one thing or the other. I mean, not financial, like material. So, but if I'm going to do the one thing or the material, I'm going to do it to make millions of naira. But a lot of people have contributed um, naturalized stone days, like you can see one of the gates. They've already got my stone days. So, some of the materials have been brought. And then one man, the freedom shops and one is very close from uh, sand and granite. So we can remove all those things, the money left was just about 7,000 naira. But the, what we have to uh, think about is that the life of the people at the end of the day, I mean, it's so important. And aesthetically, if you look at it, this place is not visiting the state capital. My name is Gabriel Saibobo, by the special grace of God, the uh, chairman of the Nintipa Driver Association in the state. Uh, you see, we are happy for a thing like, like this. Uh, if we can get another body like you, and uh, we believe that uh, Nigeria will proceed further. Because it is not easy to see somebody who will use his time to help others. So when we are seeing a thing like this, our union always want to be a particular of it.